going on? How are you? Thank you for having me. This is, uh, it's been like one of my favorite things to do so far. Everybody's so nice. Honestly, it's just so great. Even though I became an asshole on Heroes, you're really, <laughs> everybody's just been so sweet. What's that? I did it for my family, yeah, yeah. But I didn't get my brakes checked, apparently. I, I, I didn't get my suspension checked, and I just went off the, off the road. That's so fun. All right, let's go ahead and now get started with a couple of things. You want to talk to us about some stuff going on with you right now, like your graphic novel, your charity, band? Sure, yeah. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. I've got um, one thing that just got announced is uh, Kevin Smith and I are doing a show on AMC called uh, Geeking Out, which is going to be... <laughs> yes! And it's... <laughs> I mean, there's some really good stuff out there, obviously, but a lot of it's hidden, and you just have to find it, whatever. This is going to be on After Fear, the Walking Dead on AMC, and it's um, it's the two of us doing what we all love to do at a you know here, but all over the world, and that is just geeking out about the different things, and, and it's going to be peer to peer. So it'll be me, you know, the dream uh, is kind of like me on the set of the next Star Wars, and just interviewing as they're setting up for a shot, or with Johnny Depp on something, or whatever, peer to peer, and then um, Kevin will handle like you know uh, directors and things. We're going to just appreciating how much we all love all of this stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of like the Daily Show kind of thing where we're going to send out correspondence to like there's a, there's a dude I just met who's got a um, he's got a miniature golf course in his backyard that he built. That's crazy enough. Okay. Right. Like nine holes. And each hole is devoted to like he's got a Star Wars hole and a Star Trek hole and, all, and, and it's amazing. And he drives his daily driver is the car from Back to the Future the DeLorean. <laughs> I mean, this guy's, and he's married, and is, and is, and he's a really great guy, and his family. So, like, you know, imagine we send a really great correspondent, or if I go, it's just going to be so funny. I want to just interview his wife and go, what's going on here, you know? Like, we all appreciate these things, but this is nuts. Lots of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's not loaded, though. He's not like a... Really? No, he's not. He's just, just personality. That's the reason why yeah. my wife picked him. But it's that kind of appreciating that, and also, like, appreciating and saluting people that have had the most memorable moments in movies, kind of like me, no. Um, uh, but like, you know, the guy from the Karate Kid who was like, you know, sweep the leg! Like, what happened to that guy? Not Ralph Macchio. No, not Ralph Macchio, but like that crazy guy, you know. Like, I wanna, I wanna take that guy to lunch and just like give him a hug and go, relax, dude, relax. Um, no, it's really fun, so, so that's happening. We're shooting a bunch of things, I'm, you'll, you'll see me either with my cell phone or there's a crew, you know, they'll be shooting me, just doing fun stuff, interviewing really great people. Um, what else do I have going on? The band is my band, if you don't know, band from TV. It's, it's me and a bunch of other actors. We've been doing it for nine years, raised over $6 million for charity, and we each have charity. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And so we're, um, and I'm working with, if you don't know Jeremy, we're working with Jeremy now, and he's, he's gonna be, where the band is gonna be doing cons, which is, Awesome. I mean, there's no reason why we shouldn't be, you know, get a huge corporate sponsor so we can give money to charity, but also do like a huge cosplay party or a huge party should be banned from TV, should be playing, you know? And then we can get other people up. Joey Fatone just joined us in Puerto Rico for a, you know, for a Wells Fargo party. But I mean, that's, we want to play these events because there's so many people, everybody's having fun. And if everybody said, okay, I'm going to put an extra $40 off to the side or whatever, knowing it's going to go to charity, it just feels so good. And, uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that's in the works, and um, what else? There's a, I don't know, there's an episode something going on that I might be a part of, we'll see, who knows. <laughs> oh yeah, my graphic novel. Yeah, so I, uh, over the last two years, I, um, I wrote with uh, a great illustrator named um, Lucas Turnblum, wrote a, a graphic novel called uh, Dream Jumper. And my son, um, I'm rambling. You're supposed no, to be a no, Q no, and A. No, this is you're all good. A. Is everybody upset about that right now? No, no. no. Th this is we, just A, we, and I, I feel like such an A up here. <laughs> just. <laughs> just <laughs> Thank you. Um, we'll get to the Q in a minute. Okay, good, good, Which good. Which sounds weird anyway. It does <laughs> sound weird. Um, so uh, it's called Dream Jumper. So cool. And this is, this is the truth. Um, my middle son, Ben had a, a dream, a nightmare. And he woke up and he was so distraught. And I said, I'm just, you know, cuddling him. This is years ago. I'm cuddling him, I'm like, are you okay? It's, uh, yeah. And, and uh, I said, okay, you gotta go back to sleep. It's in the middle of the night. 
And uh, he said, it was so real, Dad, it was so vivid. And I was like, what, what, what is it? He goes, it was like I was a superhero and I was able to jump in and out of my friend's nightmares and help them through their worst fears. And I was like, don't go to bed, Daddy's gonna get his laptop. <laughs> Child I mean, I, exploit. That's mm. pretty cool, yeah. right? No, you're exploiting your children. I think. It's yes. <laughs> Come on, Joe Jackson did it years ago. Grow it up. So anyway, so so yeah, so I, I took the idea and I and I thought, okay, this is gonna be a great movie idea. Took it to JJ. JJ being my best friend in the world, if you don't know, since we were five. So and you're his lucky charm. Yes, I am. He wouldn't be successful without That's me. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. That's so not true. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, he was like, no, this is, this is a, definitely a movie or a TV series or whatever, but write a book. Graphic novelist feels like that. And at Comic-Con in San Diego, I met Lucas, uh -huh. um, and uh, he does uh, work for my website, Talk About It, which is for epilepsy, and um, he was doing a strip for us and whatever, and I talked to him, and I knew nothing about the graphic novel world except for the ones that I read, which were very few, and... This hadn't been done, right. not ju not like this, you know. Cool. So we wrote it over the course of two years. Just uh, Scholastic picked it up. We're going to do a series of at least three of them, and we've written two of them. And one of them's coming out in June. Free comic book day is coming up. There'll be a few chapters available in every comic book store around the world. And then they're doing. We did a six page thing, and they're doing a million and a half copies that they're sending out to all the schools around the country, so people can kids will get into it. And it's kind of the missing chapter in one of our books. And and then Paramount just bought it as a movie, so it's going to be like crazy, this thing. We'll see. But Option money. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. So cool. pick it up, you know, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Time for the cue. Is everybody, what? Oh. Are you okay? I kind of just want to do this, because you're really excited. There you go. Oh. You can tell he's a Trekkie. Drop the cue. <laughs> the Two Star Wars questions. guy would have cut. Just on? Is it on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Two part question. Uh, first part, did you watch the first six Star Wars movies to prepare for episode seven? Second part, which. I couldn't make it through. I just couldn't make it through <laughs> all of them. Which character from the first six movies do you most identify with? Wow, that's a good question. Um, and I'm drawing a blank on his name now. The other X Wing fighter with the beard, Porky? Porkins. 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 Uh, Porkins. Uh, Chet Pork is it is Porkies. it, is it I, Chet Porkins? Is it Porkies? Porkins. Porkins. Porkies yeah, my favorite Porkins. movie ever. Yeah. Porkies. Really? I'm gonna he, go. He died. No, I know. Great movie. No, no, no. You know what's funny is that so I show up in London with and I know nothing, nothing at all, and because uh, everything's so top secret. Even though JJ's my best friend, uh, he, he just he's really good at that. Really good at keeping secrets, and uh, I have you know naked pictures of him, so uh. I'll work forever. <laughs> um, so not true. No one wants to see that, trust me. Um, but uh, I show up, I know nothing, and the, the, the cast is all having dinner, and I walk into the restaurant, and Larry Kasdan, who is there, um, looks across, he sees me coming down the stairs. I've never met him before, and it's Larry Kasdan, right? And he looks at me and he goes, there he is, Snap Wexley! And I was like, what? <laughs> what? It was the coolest name, such a cool name. And then they told me what I was doing, and I had the beard, and JJ's like, oh, okay, you're going to shave that. You got to shave it. And everybody at the table was like, no, this looks good. It looks really good. And it took me forever to grow that thing. And I was like, I'm keeping this. And sure enough, it, it kind of harkens back to Porkins, and I think it's cool. Huh? And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, hopefully we don't look exactly alike. <laughs> I mean, there's a little more of a chin with me, I'm hoping. So, no, but it's fun. It's fun to play that, to be that character. And this is it's an absolute dream. Um, I have been a huge fan of. Star Wars since I was a kid. Uh, I became a, a, a Star Trek fan as well. I'm in um, uh, Star Trek Beyond, which is coming out, which is yeah. kind of, let's keep that within this room. Um, oh, give us more. Yeah. Uh, let's but go viral. Let's go viral. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I've got this, this coffee mug, uh, this Starbucks thing, and I got a sticker um, that JJ gave me, and it says you have to trek before you war. And I'm like... <laughs> but you're... Yeah, man. But you're the voice of Kirk's stepdad, right? When yes. Yeah, when he's driving in the car and you hear him you know, going, you touch that car, I swear to God. That was me. Yeah. That was me. Mm -hmm. Kirk's evil mm -hmm. stepdad. stepdad. Yeah. Evil stepdad. Yeah, that was a really cool thing. JJ's done that a couple times with me. In um, Super 8, 
the kids are down below and they're underneath the house. There's a house up above and there's a sitcom on in the house and you hear the sitcom. So it's like, honey, I'm blah, blah, blah. And it's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. that's all me. That's all me. <laughs> <laughs> the boys, is, so it's like. I didn't I, know that one. Yeah, so I've, I've worked in a couple of JJ's films you know, literally in my pajamas at home, talking into a little microphone, you know, and he's like, and then he'll call me back and go, no, and he's directing me at three in the morning. Um, but yeah, we, he's the best guy ever. What, you, what everybody thinks of him, times 10. He's just, he honestly is great. That's why the best, you know, people love working with him over and over again. Granted, even if he was a jerk, I'm sure people would want to work with him over and over again because the projects he does, he is such a great person. I'm, I'm lucky to have him as a friend. You know, that's number one. All this other stuff, it doesn't hurt, but, uh, <laughs> but he's, a, he's just a great guy. Okay, right behind you. Let's keep it rolling or next Good Q, buddy. Good Q. <laughs> Interception. Hey, how are you? Hi. Um, I'm losing my voice. That's okay. Throw up into that box. Just, uh, just, <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um... I wanted uh, to ask, what was it like filming scenes in the X-Wing cockpit, it, where you're just in a cockpit, maybe they're shaking a bit, versus seeing the finished product and how it got integrated into the movie? That's a great question. Um, so the, uh, the X-Wing, one of the first things I did was in the life-size X-Wing, you know, like a real X-Wing, um, that was parked in that whole outer area, you know, with the green mountain, the green mounds and stuff. That area, by the way, is called uh, Greenlee, I believe it's called. And it's an area that, it was British military for a long time. And then uh, there was a lot of nuclear testing and with stuff that was going on, not there, but th it had something to do with it. This is going way, I, I don't, this is kind of the, uh, you know, Cliff Notes version of, of history. But there were so many protests, they, they called it the women of Greenlee. These, all these women used to, stay right outside the fence, outside of this military base, and uh, they would protest peacefully for years, and they would sleep there in rotation and say, gotta get rid of this place, this place is terrible, it represents everything, whatever, and at night they would cut holes in the fence, and then they'd have to rebuild it. It was like the, this thing that went on for years and years, and then a guy bought it, um, uh, at this huge place, and he has a huge military collection of like tanks and He's just one of these, you know, super wealthy guys. His son, uh, Dixie Arnold, is in the movie. And uh, he's a super cool guy, and we became friends, and he took me around this. I'm not answering your question at all, I just realized. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, but this is, this is super cool, because it was, uh, and I've never told the story, it was just like at lunch, you know, we, there was a thousand people working on this movie, and, uh, and he'd be like, psst, come here. And I'd go into this room, and there were these old planes, huge, um, you know, like uh, big warehouses, and old planes and tanks and things. And um, now I think they're going to sell it back to the government. I'm not sure uh, in Britain, but it was a very, very cool place. And uh, your question, oh, yeah. So the X-Wing. Um, so, yeah, flying in it uh, was crazy. First you look at this thing, and it's it's – the cockpit of the X-Wing, and then there's um, green screen here, green screen here, and the lighting is amazing. If you see, the shadow goes across our faces, and the, the bar is from you know, the X-Wing um, shell or whatever, the glass that, you know, they, they have that comes across our faces as we're flying. They did such a great job, and a lot of that was practical. They could have done it in post, but they wanted to get the practical lighting. Anyway, I'm not a uh, tiny guy. I don't know, if you, I, don't, I hate to shatter expectations. <laughs> But, Neither uh, am I. Yeah, yeah. So imagine they strap you into this thing, and I'm in this thing, and it's kind of up on, but much higher, and green screen, and then they strap the camera, camera, camera. I mean, thank God I wear a bag when I work, because if I had to pee, I'd just go right into it. I can't get out of there. There's no way. We all wear bags I mean, at conventions. They're not going to use the bathrooms here. So anyway, um, actually, I used that box earlier. Sorry. I used the box. I used the box. So talk right into it. Um, so uh, I'm, they strapped me in, and, and, and I'm watching, I watched, who did it? Oscar went before me, Oscar went right before me. And I'm watching, and it's on a gimbal. Mm -hmm. So it's like, a, it's like a riding a bull, man. And they're going around, and they, <laughs> the first thing that happened with me, I'm, I kept my legs, because you can't help it, my legs are stiff, and it's like you're flexing your muscles the whole time. So after 10 minutes, I'm just like <laughs> woozy. You're not just hanging on. And the joystick, or the yoke of the thing, is I, I'm doing this and all of a sudden, it comes out. 
And I was like, and then I'm like pretending, there's like shots of me pretending to be riding a bull. But it, I just, and it didn't matter because the shot's up here, they come to you for three seconds or whatever. So it was really cool, but after a while, I was up there for you know a while, just throwing me lines, throwing me lines. And JJ is shooting on another unit, and I'm here. He's shooting the snow stuff when you see Harrison and Chewbacca like running across, and I'm shooting this stuff. And they're throwing me lines. And I, I'm making up stuff. I'm, I'm th shouting out stuff just to make JJ laugh in the edit in the edit bay and whatever. And then they say, okay, there's a bunch of lines we want you to say. Um, I've been shot. I'm going down, uh, and I'm like. Pfft. No way. I'm not saying any of that stuff. <laughs> and sure enough, I just didn't say it. And they called over to JJ and said, he won't say it. And I'm like, fuck you guys. I'm not saying this. No and, way. And he, he let you do that? Really? Yeah. I want to come back. I know, but it's amazing. You must really have really good picks on him. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Saying, no, I mean, look, th this is what you, you see. I don't want to be one of these. You, won. you know what I mean? Like, like you know. So, uh, you, yeah. Uh, so that was a really cool not experience. like Porkins. What? That's how you ended up not like Porkins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. That's Do you right. have one of the crazy lines you said just to make JJ laugh? I there's a line you know that I made up that was really classic, and it's a line that you'd put on a T-shirt, and uh, it it worked so well that he had to take it out. It lived for a long time in the film, and I walked into the last um, mixing session, and it was literally it was me and it was JJ and Kathy Kennedy and and. Uh, John Williams walks in, sits next to me, and I'm like, and they're, they're, everybody's seen the film except for me, and it's the last time, they'd lock the cut, but they, it's the last time that anybody could say anything about the sound, like, you know, just little things, and, let, and JJ's all about that, and, uh, you know, if you hear something, Brian Burke, too, is like, you know, they want everyone's opinion, right. they're not, you know, pr they're not precious about anything. So anyway, I walk in, and John Williams goes, hey, Snap Wexley, same experience I had in London, <laughs> and I was like, awesome, and then he says, the line that I say in the movie. And it is, uh, so I'll tell you, um, Poe, uh, Oscar throws out a line, and he's like, all right, everybody to light speed. And I say, is there any other speed? <laughs> Which is like, <laughs> I mean, best line ever. And they cut it out. And they cut it out, oh. and it, that's a line that goes on a t-shirt. Right. Is there any other speed? speed. And so it's happen. on the DVD. I'm proud to say it's back in, and it's as a bonus on the DVD. It's a great story. Yeah. Right behind you. You can throw it when you're done, though. I haven't played since Little League, so... Don't, <laughs> throw, don't throw it upside down, because I don't want anything to leak out. <laughs> you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have said that, Greg. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, first of all, good to see you again. You too. Uh, Thank you for being a part of the Star Wars legacy. That is awesome. And the question I have for you is, what would you say, if something you may have heard in your professional or personal life, is your favorite motivational quote? Oh, wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> it was my favorite quote until uh, he, he basically is going to go to jail. Um, it was uh, Bill Cosby has a great quote <laughs> that I don't even remember exactly what it is. I have it in my wallet, but it just talks about um, not trying to please everyone, um, which is really important. You know, just don't ride the fence. Do something. Make a choice. That you know. It, it, and again, I'm not gonna. I'm, I, I can't remember the quote exactly because it's like one of those things. Oh, and OJ had a great one too. Um, <laughs> His TV shows. All these are my guys, stuff. man. These are my guys. The yeah. Then we're getting to Manson. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Manson has something right here right that I just. Here. Uh, but, right. I, but I tell people when I'm talking to actors or, or um, producers or whatever, because I'm really doing a lot of stuff. I'm like really you know, producing and writing and doing, I have a, a pilot right now with Shonda Rhimes at ABC that, uh, that I wrote, co-created uh, with Scott Foley that, you know, I don't really, I'm talking about it just because I'm really trying to take advantage of all my opportunities, right? And creatively. And I tell people, there, a couple of people came up to the, my, uh, where I'm signing and they, they say, any advice? I'm a struggling actor. I'm thinking about getting into acting. I just say, don't get out of line. And I mean, don't get out of the line that you're in. If you, it's a long line. Some people jump right to the front. Some people will stand there for a long time, like I did. And I just tell people, don't get discouraged and step out of line. Because the longer you're in line, don't be discouraged by that, the more prepared you'll be. And I think you can take that into life in, in general. Is you know, Look at it like, this is my opportunity to get better. And I'm constantly going to get better. And, I'm constantly, and then when that door, door opens, you're more prepared than anybody else.
So that's what I, I tell people a lot of times. And, I, well, and then I have to wake them up and go, did you hear me? <laughs> did you hear what I just said? <laughs> okay, more questions, please. We get, you want to there and then throw it over here. I promise to throw all the way over there next time. Um, oh, shit, I forgot my question. Let me back here. No, no, sir, take your time. All right. <laughs> sorry. No, 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 take, take our time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, um, what was getting off of Star Wars and going to Heroes? What was your favorite episode filming of Heroes? Great question, actually. Um, I think it was episode 17 of the first season, which was where we were, uh, oh, oh it's, uh, I think it was called Company Man, the episode, oh. which is like, uh, for me, such a great episode because I had to, suddenly I was conflicted. I was like, wait a minute, I, we're going to kidnap all these people in the house, I can't do this. And, and it was one of our biggest undertakings. We had three houses built. We had the outside of the house, we had a burn set, and then we had, oh, we had three burn sets, three insides. We had a perfectly fine house, Claire's house. Then we had a slightly burned version of Claire's house. And then a completely torched version of it. And then we lit. They, they have the stuff they call butter. They, that, it looks like butter, but it's like flammable. And they put it on everywhere. And it just flames up. And there were moments that it just got so hot in there. And there was tension. And I shot Claire. And, you know, she spits out the... Bullet. I mean, that was a really, really cool episode. Yeah. Um, I can't, I just can't forget that. And I love, you know, that's my favorite. All right, thank yeah. you. Cool. Sure. You know, oh. get started over there. It's fine. Um, it's like one of those, one of those blow up balls at a, right. at a Dodger game. Or, well, mm -hmm. not a Dodger you game. Were, you were talking about your charity. Yeah. Um, and I know you said epilepsy as at least one of them. What made you decide on the charities you decided on rather than the five billion other charities It's a great question. The world? Unfortunately, charities find you. Uh, I'm a member of a club that no one wants to be a part of, which is a, fa a father of a child that has something. And my son has epilepsy, which is such a fucked up condition, I can't even begin to tell you. He's completely fine and normal, like everybody else, that most people that have epilepsy. You can live your a normal life, an extraordinary life, but seizures are really difficult. And when they hit, you know, because it's like an earthquake that can hit at any time. So Jake, when he was seven, he started having seizures, and I've become a national spokesperson. I love it, I have to say. You know, it's like, you know, if you believe, whatever you believe in, you know, you get chosen for a reason. I can handle this, and I never thought I could. My wife and I, she's incredible. And I proudly... Um, you know, a caregiver of uh, somebody who's living well with epilepsy, and I, and I encourage people. So if you haven't gone to talkaboutit.org, that's my foundation, and it's just encouraging people not to be afraid to talk about it. But um, Hugh Laurie is in the band. Hugh's uh, charity is Save the Children because his sister sits on the board of Save the Children. That's his. Um, uh, let's see, West, Mem West Memphis 3, uh, which is a charity that was originally for these three uh, guys that got wrongly accused. Um, and so uh, that's Adrian's charity. His wife, uh, Natalie Maines from the Dixie Chicks, she, she, that's her thing, and so he supports that. I mean, there's, there's reasons, e each one of us got kind of, you know, you get steered in that direction. I mean, before Jake got epilepsy, I have to say, I wasn't proud of it, but I would go to these charity events because I wanted to help, and I wanted to do something meaningful, you know? Um, we get so spoiled as actors, and yeah, it's really tough at times, but it's really easy at times too, and you know, and we're very fortunate to be able to work and be able to do this, and so you kind of want meaning, and I, I just happen to, I have to. It's now, it's the most important thing in my life, and I try and bring it into everything I do. But um, yeah, so everybody in the band, if you go to uh, go to bandfromtv.org, you'll see all the charities that we support. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Throw it. Throw it. <laughs> nice uh, box, so fella. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, I told you this yesterday. You were by far my favorite uh, character on Heroes. Thank you. Um, uh, so, it kind of like the X-Wing question. When you, those, those scenes where you would, like, read someone's mind, was it, like, bef before they had, like, done all the special effects and everything, was it, like, a like five-second, like, awkward silence while you were doing <laughs> Dude, that? Dude, it was. That's a great <laughs> question. It was so weird. Like, no one set the rules. Okay, so imagine I come to set one of the first days. It's when I'm outside in the police outfit on the, in the pilot, and I'm walking through, and I'm hearing voices, and I'm, like, following the voice, and I'm walking into the house, right? 
So um, if you remember, by the way, we reshot. I don't, I don't know if you know, you guys know, but the first uh, version of the script, there was a whole terrorist storyline. And I come into the house and I find this guy and he's, and he's a terrorist and he's hiding under the stairs. They didn't want to do that. They thought it was just a, a kind of like a red herring. It takes the audience in the wrong direction. So like we're going to reshoot the inside of the, of the house. So that was months later, okay, and 40 pounds later for me. So if you go back and watch Heroes. The struggle is real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a heavy version of me walks in, and then the interior, it's like, whoa, look at this guy. I mean, I lost so much weight. We reshot it, and that's, you know, because I was like, oh, this show could be something. i got to get into shape. Um, and uh, anyway, the uh, first version, I'm walking past these extras, and they're cops. And I'm walking past, and they had read the script. Both sides, right? And one of them is, man, I could really go for a donut right now. And you know, they're just establishing that I'm hearing these voices. <laughs> so I walk past this one guy outside, and he goes like this, man, I could really go for a donut right now. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, it's your thought. You don't have to say it. We'll put it in later. And they all had planned that. So as I'm walking, and there's, a, there's definitely a version somewhere where I'm like, and I walk past, and this guy says his thing, and then she says something, and I'm just like, <coughs> I'm like, I'm like cracking up, going into the house. So it was very awkward at first, and then um, it, what's funny is Heroes Reborn comes back, right? And I get a call, and Tim's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. And so it was the night before I was supposed to shoot the next day, and we're having dinner as a family, and my kids are like, hey, Dad, have you given any, have you, have you practiced the look? I'm like, the look? What are you talking about? And they're like, you know, the... Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I guess I do have a thing, right? And they go, yeah, you haven't done it in years. And I'm like, well, yeah, I got to pick that up in a second. And they're like, do it. I'm like, come on, do it. I'm like, okay. And I go, and my, bro my, my, my kids go, nah, that's not, that's not it. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. And it's just like, well, I've really got to work on this. I've got to watch it and try to get it back. Everybody's a director. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But who's up? Who's up? Come on. We got some more questions. Oh, right behind you and right in front of me. Very musky. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> um, I so had some uh, asparagus. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Good vintage. Uh, between the time when you get a script and get a read through on that and then go to table reads and then you go to set, at which stage do you feel like you get to start having the most impact on crafting the character the way that you see it? As it opposed to what has been told to you. Yeah, it depends project to project, right? So um, sitcoms, there's always a table read. Um, alias, there wasn't a table read because we started doing it, you know? And it was like, uh, Victor would be like, uh, his name is Abu Nibe, and he's from blah, 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 And then all of a sudden, the, the narrator, uh, you know, would be sitting at the end of the table, and he'd be like, explosion, explosion, go to a club, and oomt, 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 and then... <laughs> Like, oh my God, like, this is all so much action. You don't have to read through the action. It's, you know, the dialogue's important. So the rhythm of comedy, you definitely have to do it. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, ours is coming up uh, on, the, on a sitcom that I created. But um, uh, Heroes, we didn't have a table read. It's just a waste of time getting everybody together. It slows everything down. Um, but in, in so far as having an impact, it's also project to project. Depends on... You know, if, if, if I hate when an actor comes to set and they don't know their stuff or they're complaining about their lines because we get the script at least eight days in advance, seven days. So if you have a problem, go in and talk to the creator, talk to the writers. You know, you have the time to do it. Um, some are more welcome than others, but don't wait until you get on set because everyone else has prepared their stuff. We all need to work. We all need to be professional about it. And, you know, there was, there's a classic story on uh, NYPD Blue where David Milch had written, um, I think it was NY. I was on that show, and, and they told me that one guy was like, my character wouldn't say this. He's just, this is wrong. My character wouldn't say this. Was it, Caruso? it wasn't Caruso, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no. Some, there's some notorious stories. Oh, <laughs> see, I, this is not working right now. Sorry, I can't get into it. I really um, would like to hear those. Oh, more. boy, there's some classic <laughs> stories. I've heard some. But, he, but this actor was like, oh, no, I can't. I can't my, and so they called David Milch down from the office, comes down to set, and he's like, what's the problem? What's going on? And he goes, I'm just telling you, my character wouldn't say this. And he's like, let me see. And he looks at the script and he goes, oh, no, yeah, I would. Says it right there. 
It's like, shut your mouth and try the material as written. The writers don't just write it. They act it out. They go over it a million times. There's rhythm to it. So when you have the time, I always tell actors, go up and tell them your grievances. They may not listen to you, but at least do it before. Because it's not fair to take it out on everybody on set, you know. But that's kind of how it evolves, yeah. Okay, cool. We've got a question up here and then one over there. Hey, Ooh, nice. Good catch. Really good catch. Probably the sports star in the back. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know you obviously have your charities and many, many uh, things that you're working on. Yeah. But you've done a lot of things with business in the past. Is that something you're still focusing on or is it kind of taking a back burner right now? No, uh, yeah, so I've, I've um, dipped my foot into the business space a little bit. I, I love tech, and I created uh, this thing called Yowza, which um, I don't know if you know, it's, it was the number one mobile coupon app for forever. If you, have, if you don't have it, download it. It's free. We, I actually sold the business um, about a year and a half ago, but we built it up, and it really uh, it turned into something great. What I'm trying to do, I definitely have, you know, my business is in my blood for my dad, and so I, I'm kind of doing that as a producer and as a writer and uh, um, with my production company. So w I've got that going, but I started this new thing called Demand Jam, which a friend of mine created and I, I'm part of it now. Um, go to demandjam.com and register. It's for um, huge artists for music, huge artists, little shows. You know when somebody goes, oh my God, the, the Rolling Stones played down the street or, I mean, it happens. It happens all across the country. You know, Dave Grohl is not notorious for it. He'll pop into town and, yeah, he's playing the, the stadium, he's playing the Coliseum, but he plays a little local bar. And you always hear about it afterwards. Now you can hear about it before if you pre-register. It's free. You go on, put your email in there, and that's it. Nothing else. You don't have to pay or nothing. And then we'll send you an email saying you have an hour to buy it. There's only 200 tickets. And it's, and so we're doing it in certain cities across the country. But that's something that, I'm, that I've you know, jumped on. But other than that, it's all going to be uh, entertainment-based. One thing I've really learned from JJ, of all people, is focus just to focus, because I mean, I, there's enough opportunities for business in the business, you know, so um, I won't create any more um, crazy uh, coupon apps. <laughs> Although it's, it's great, yowza, yowza, download it for free, save money. Sweet, so we had a question in the back, the, the Whovian, come on. Good, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just have to ask you, how insane is it working with you, Lori? Yeah, <laughs> you know what's funny is like I walk around and Bob Guinea's in the band. You know who Bob is from The Bachelor, Bob Guinea, and Scott Grimes, who's on American Dad, and you know ER and everything. Scotty's the greatest. Who else? Jesse Spencer from Chicago Fire, or whatever. We all have this, and Adrian. We all have this like you know image from TV where we're affable and like friendly and, and everything. Hugh is the greatest guy ever. He's the nicest guy in the world, but he played such a curmudgeon. That, that when we walk through places, people are like, oh, God, oh, my God. You know. <laughs> Dr. Gregory House. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. Why is he not limping? I mean, the, everybody, you see it all the time. <laughs> it's right. like, and I think he enjoys that because he's able to put on a hat. And, but he is, man, that guy is such a giant star. It's crazy. And couldn't be sweeter. Couldn't be a nicer guy. Yeah, I We're, tend to think of him more of the Wooster and Jeeves era. Yeah, I mean, if you if you don't know, look up Hugh Laurie and look up some of his stuff that he did years ago. And Stephen Fry, great. Laurie and Fry. Laurie yeah, and Fry. And a bit of Fry and Laurie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He also has his own band, too. He's great. I yeah, mean, so. My, my wife's a huge fan. Oh, cool, yeah. yeah. So he was he music. played with me for, we, we formed a band from TV together, and then now he's broken off and he's got his own band. It's, yeah. I guess, the Hugh Laurie band or something. But Yeah, absolutely. He, they were here a couple of years ago in Lexington. Yeah. If you guys were. If you get a great. chance to see him. Yeah, they're fantastic. They're incredible musicians, these guys. And uh, his drummers. Well, he's all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not jealous <laughs> at all. It's, uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all right. You can definitely find somebody to hug it out with. Yeah, you, right? yeah. Okay. No, he's, he's great, though. But I see, it, I see it on people's faces, and he laughs about it. He's like, you know, he's aware of it. Any other questions? Oh, we got some more questions over here in the back. Cool. Oh, oh man. So we're doing I, so well. I never let us down. be able to catch. Uh, first question, do you want to hug it out? Because I'm cool with that. <laughs> want, no, all right. I, as the moderator, I'm not letting you up here to hug him. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to you, Because he's going to be nice about it and go, oh, I, uh, 
It's on the price list on my table. Oh, so, okay. I'll, you know, I'll and everybody there. has a price. Yeah, exactly. Now I'll come and you'll kick me out of line. And that's right. <laughs> um, so do you think, uh, since so much of The Force Awakens kind of mirrored um, A New Hope, do you think uh, Snap Wexley is kind of like the this generation's Wedge Antilles? Wow. Quite do, possibly, do, do. yes. You never know. I know those are big, um, uh, you know, X-Wing. I'm a double XL wing fighter, just so you know. Uh, but um, maybe. You never know. I mean, I, we went to dinner. You know, our families are really close, and we went to dinner, and my kids are just like, you know, Jay, Jay's like, so how's school? What's going on with baseball? My kids play baseball in school. And they're like, yeah, good, good, good. So in the next one, what do you think? I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> It's crazy. And, and, and like 10 Cloverfield Lanes out this weekend. Holy shit, is that a good movie? It's so good. He didn't direct it, he didn't write it. But I have to say, and I haven't even seen the whole thing. I only saw like the first uh, 30 minutes of it. It's awesome. He knows what he's doing. And uh, so, whatever he has me do, whatever they ask me to do, you know, in, in of course, Star Wars, whatever it is, I don't care. If I'm doing craft service on the next movie, I'm happy. I don't care. That's pretty sweet. Unless, unless you have to say you're going down and you've been hit. I won't do that. I won't do that. I used to say that in my porn days. I will not say that again. <laughs> you've got to work your way up. Yeah. We've got one in the back. Sir, you may want to throw it to the other gentleman. There, thank you. There we go. Hey, how are you? Um, you? Everybody knows um, that you do a good job in your movies, but uh, what type of things would you change if you could? Wow, good question as well. Um, man, uh, I wouldn't have crashed the plane and lost. <laughs> right? I mean, I would have watched a show called Hover. <laughs> Circling the airport again <laughs> next week. Another delay. Um, I, you know, th there are opportunities I wish I, I had longer on certain shows, but I, um, I, I, I don't regret anything. I've been really, really, really fortunate, and um, I love doing this. I really do. I mean, Jeremy will tell you, it's like when you guys come up and, and we talk, I, I love it. Um, so this, it, and it all leads to this, you know, so... Um, there are some opportunities that I wish I would have grabbed and other opportunities, but that's just part of life. You know, when you hear about an opportunity, you don't take it or you take this opportunity and it doesn't open up, you know, it closes you off from other things. But I'm doing things, I mean, I've, I've shot a couple pilots. I'm getting into the hosting space. I told you with Kevin, um, I have a thing on the Food Network that's coming out that you guys are gonna, that's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Really? I love, yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Uh, I can't, yeah. it's just a pilot I just shot. So, Let's go it may not viral. <laughs> no, it may, it may not happen and, uh, but, I'll tell you this, if you see something on the Food Network, this is what they do. You shoot a pilot, I just shot it, right? right? And the way they test it is they'll put it on. So they'll put it on after Guy's show. So it'll be Donna's Dramas and Dives, and all of a sudden it'll be coming up tonight. They don't, off, they don't advertise it except that night. Except So if you're watching Donna's Dramas and Dives, it says, coming up, Nickel and Dining with Greg Runberg, watch it. <laughs> okay, because if it gets ratings, then they pick it up. And it's, just, it's a really fun show. But like, I'm just doing, I'm trying a bunch of different things. And we'll see what happens. Um, you know, a game show, I love doing that kind of, I mean, I'm literally, I, I want to host. I want to do fun stuff and still be able to, um, to act. Uh, I wish I had done more comedy stuff. A lot of people don't, just don't know. Have you seen Big Ass Spider? Have you guys seen that movie? Yes. If you, yeah, if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. I produced it and uh, I star in it. And it's like, it's a, it's a, or the End of the World is another sci-fi movie that I did. I, I, I don't want to, take things too seriously. I love being the levity, you know, an alias, like everybody runs into the room with a gun, I run in with a calzone. Like, I want to be that guy. <laughs> I want to be, I want to have fun, you know? So, um, if there's any regret, it's that I didn't jump on a sitcom years ago. But, this world is a world that I love so much. You know, these sci-fi films and horror films and Why things. Why not do it now? What's that? Why not do it now? Uh, comedy? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, sitcoms, that's what I'm, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm doing that now. So that's the, you know, the Shonda Rhimes, believe it or not, it's Shonda Rhimes, but it's her first comedy. So I created that years ago, and uh, that's, that'll be, it's a sitcom, it's called Toast. We'll see what happens. It takes place at a rehearsal dinner, and everybody, the person gets up and gives a toast to the couple, and we flash back to that, so, so we see. It's kind of like How I Met Your Mother, but they're, they're done in toasts, uh, which is cool. 350 
people at the rehearsal dinner, you'll never run out of toasts. <laughs> you know? It's a big family. Okay, that's it. Let's put our hands together and thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much.